inside of Houdini, I'm going to start with dropping down a geonode, diving in there, deleting that. And let's start with a rubber toy as geometry source. Gonna convert that to a volume by doing VDB from polygons and I'm gonna convert it to a fog volume in the end. So I'll check fog VDB. I'm doing it this way because um, VDB from polygons is the quickest way to convert it. But in the end I wanna end up with a, with a standard volume. The reason why I want to use standard volumes for this is VDBs are sparse, which means by default they have areas which are disregarded in calculations, and there are techniques to activate those. However, with the setup that I'm gonna use in my solver, I couldn't, I just couldn't get it to work. So, if any one of you has an idea how to get this setup to work with purely VDBs, please let me know. I'd be really interested in that. Until that, I'll have to use normal volumes. So, let's convert that into a standard volume with a convert VDB sub. Wired up, convert it to a volume, that's good. Next thing I wanna do is, same as I did in Photoshop and blur it. So volume blur does exactly that. I'm gonna use a voxel radius give it a setting of two by two voxels. And I came up with these settings by lots of trial and error, so they just seem to work. So there we go. Wire this up, duplicate that SOP. And if you remember the Photoshop thingy, I'm gonna blur the second data stream four times as much as the first one. So in our case, four passes instead of one. So next thing I'm gonna do is subtract both streams from another. So that's done with a volume mix SOP. Wire those up to the inputs, set the mix method to subtract. And lastly, the last thing that I did in Photoshop was adjust the exposure. So multiply my values with a given factor. And the nice thing about the volume mix up is that it has this functionality already built in. It's a function called post mult, and I'm just going to multiply it by four. Again, these are values that by trial and error I figured out and uh, that worked. Let's clean this up a bit and add a null for input. Call this one in, wired up here and here, like that. And add a second null, call the output, call that out, wired up like that. Okay, now I'm gonna copy that Add a solver sop. Wire this in here. Go into the solver. Paste the notes that I copied wired up to the previous frame input. Make sure my out node is highlighted and dive up again. So now this gets executed each frame after each frame, just like the action in Photoshop. Now to get some geometry back out of that solver, which is operating purely on a fog volume at the moment. Um, adding a VDB convert node. And I wanna convert this to a VDB and wanna change it from a fog to an STF. So from a fog to a surface. That is what I'm ending up with. Impressive, huh? Let's hit play and see what it does. Well, something-ish. Let's try with a higher resolution. So change the uh, volume resolution in here. Make it smaller by a factor of 10. That looks a bit better. Let's hit play again. Well, kind of. The thing that's happening here is when I do the blur and subtract operations, I end up with a with an area which is in between black and white, which is slightly grayscale. And this is what's causing these onion skinny effects here. And this took me a while to figure out. And the way to solve it is to dive into the solver and after the volume mix, add a volume bob. And within that volume bob, we're doing two things. On the one hand, we're clamping the density after the calculation. So 
the density can have a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of 0 and nothing above or below it. And the second thing we're doing is we're making sure that a value is below a certain threshold gets set to 0. And the way we're going to do that is with a compare node and we check if the density is less than 0.1 and if the density is less than 0.1 I want to set it to 0 and I'm going to do that by adding a switch wire this in and this is a boolean value so it can be either true or false and it's going to be true if this condition is met and the condition is density is less than 0.1 and if this condition is met the switch will automatically switch to the second input so on the first input I wire up the case where this is not true so that's the clamp goes into the first input and for the case that this condition is true I wanna set density to 0 so I need to wire a zero up in here. I'm going to do that by adding a constant, which already is zero. Wire that up in here, and that goes out to the density slot. That should be it. That should have fixed it. Let's dive up. Let me check again. Add the volume bob in here. Do a clamp. Either clamp it, or if it's below that, set it to zero. OK. Let's see. It takes a while to calculate. That is because we're not using sparse VDB but standard volumes here. But it looks pretty decent. So there is an issue with that. And um, you can see that here, as the simulation progresses, it gets to the bounds of the volume. And there are several ways how to fix that. One, a rather straightforward brute force kind of method, would be to just expand the volume. Let me do that by volume resize. Wire it up in here. And I'm going to use union there and add some voxel padding, for example, 20 by 20 by 20 voxels. That didn't look too good. Limit resolution off. Let's go by size here. Okay. However, this bigger volume will end in uh, longer render times, or longer simulation times actually. So as soon as I hit play, my simulation takes quite some time to calculate. So I think there's a better way for that. And just let me stop that simulation, go back to the start and delete that volume resize here. And the way I like to do it is directly in the solver. So what I want to do is let the solver check for each step how big a volume we need and adjust the volume size accordingly. So I'm going to dive into the solver. And even before we're inputting this simulation here, I want to do two things. On the one hand, I want to get the volume bounds. So wire that up in here and highlight it. I'll see that gives me a bounding box as a geometry and the region to find should be greater than 0.1 exactly and um, I want to use this bounding box to resize the incoming volume and I'm going to do that with a volume resize wire the incoming volume up here and wire the bounding box up here highlight that and I would like to add some padding because I'm going to blur it in the next step so I think I might need some additional space around and I'm just going to use like padding of 
two by two by two voxels here. So that expanded the voxel box a bit. And I'm gonna feed that into my simulation. So now the solver checks for each frame how big the volume has to be and resizes it accordingly. So when we have a rather big simulation, of course the volume gets big, the simulation times get very long. But as soon as we have just the beginning of a simulation or a very small simulation, my simulation will run quite fast. So let's highlight the output, go up again, and let that run. And as you can see, what's happening now is the volume get automatically scales up as the simulation grows, and thus the outer parts of the simulation cannot collide with the volume bounds anymore, so you won't get those clipped edges. Instead, they just keep growing, which is exactly what we want. So that was reaction diffusion in 3D, the quick way. And for this simulation, the main parameters that you can adjust are within the solver. Um, they are the settings in those two blur nodes and the post multiplication factor in the volume mix. So you can play around with those values and um, try achieving different looks, different results. Just let the simulation grow, experiment with it, many different looks possible with that. These are just the basic settings that seem to kind of work all the time. And again, I just um, found them out by trial and error. And if you happen to find some specially beautiful settings for the solver, please let us know. If you create any artwork using this, even better, just drop a line, shout out on Twitter. Um, we really appreciate seeing your work. So hope you have fun with that. And cheers and goodbye.